extremely dangerous. There were several murders and uh, a great deal of molesting and a lot of street hassles, but that's changed completely. As a shopkeeper, I'm primarily concerned with uh, the shops that are opening up on the street. I think uh, it makes a great deal of difference in the temper of the neighborhood. A year ago, even six months ago, people wouldn't come down to Hay Street to shop because there was nothing here to shop for. And uh, that's changing tremendously. Working together, we can change our neighborhood. Make it a place of brotherhood. Make it turn out good. Changing our neighborhood. Well, I see a slowly, slow change in the neighborhood that seems to be more responsible people trying to open businesses, trying to get the neighborhood to clean up. I believe that uh, the fear that existed about three years ago is greatly dispelled. People, uh, so-called straights, aren't nearly as scared of long hair as they used to be. I'll tell you what's not happening, which is uh, drugs. There's a lot less drugs and a lot less uh, late selling of drugs right on the street. Now. The crime rate doesn't seem to be as bad. It's hard to assess that, but I feel safer. <laughs> For chicks, it's a little safer than it was a couple of years ago. Like, we can walk down the street at night without worrying about getting knifed. Well, I haven't been mugged yet. <laughs> People are beginning to settle down and find that they have to live together with each other. Since the flower children has gone, where they've been building up, restoring these old houses, painting, and that sort of thing, it's really coming back to life, I think. The community itself is basically getting together for itself. And welcoming a few of us that are older in so that we can all work together to bring the area back to what it was at one time. There's such a um, a spirit of brotherhood here in this in this neighborhood that uh, it's overwhelming to us. Really, it is. Da, 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 da. which was occurring in the Haight-Ashbury was very destructive. It was speculation that rested on deterioration of the building stock. It was speculation that said, we'll let this building run down for the next five years and just collect the rents and not make the improvements because after five years, we can tear the building down and build something bigger and we can have higher rents and all that. Ron Jonash is an architect who lives in the Haight and as an alternative to military service works as an urban planner for the city of San Francisco. In the spring of 1972, a coalition of Haight residents succeeded in getting virtually the entire neighborhood rezoned downward, a feat unparalleled in city history. Jonash, who helped make it happen, recalls how neighborhood people first became aroused about the zoning issue. 
they learned that the neighborhood was zoned to allow densities uh, ten times in some places what the present density of the community was. This was very frightening to everybody concerned and consequently um, a movement developed to get the densities reduced. They had all the rational arguments but they needed the political support. So the impression of the community by both the Commission and the Board of Supervisors had always been one of a community divided against itself and destined to be taken advantage of by outside interests. But for once, the community got together and unified itself against those supposed outside interests and was able to come through and get the job done. By reducing the allowable density by two-thirds, it certainly encourages owners to rehabilitate rather than to wait for the building to deteriorate and eventually be replaced by a much larger building. And that the only real way to, to stabilize the neighborhood would be to get people to fix up the buildings and to have faith that the neighborhood would continue as a family neighborhood in San Francisco. Well, I think I see sort of a general interest family by family in the property. I remodeled the whole house. It was a condemned building and um, took $23,000 to put it back into shape. I think it has hit its bottom and it's coming up. There's a lot of new businesses opening and uh, my husband's a painter here and he's pretty busy. Yeah, I noticed uh, sold signs on buildings have been sitting there for a long time with for sale signs on them. I have myself, I have customers coming in for painting up and redecorating these old Victorian buildings and they're looking real sharp. The city and the neighborhood have stated unequivocally in policy now that the neighborhood should be preserved fairly much in its present scale and character and present density levels. who organized the rezoning effort and continues to play a leading role in neighborhood politics is Calvin Welch. In a very real way, the, the hate has traditionally been uh, uh, split amongst roughly, and it's a very rough difference, uh, uh, three groups in the hate ashbury White long hairs, uh, uh, white property owning, fairly long-term residents, and black people. Uh, uh, what has been happening in the Haight-Ashbury has been a, a series of uh, at times fairly painful uh, and it's at times very pleasant kind of growing together of those three elements and discussing in such a way problems, issues, in such a way that individual personality clashes are kept minimized and, and, and the focus is on problems that, that we all feel in this community and that are fairly plainly visible to everyone in this community. And there are many such issues. Health care is such an issue. The Haight-Ashbury is literally ringed by hospitals. We have St. Mary's and Harkness to the north. We have St. Joseph's Hospital to the east. And we have UC Medical Center to the south and west. Each hospital sees itself as a separate entity. None of them sees themselves as a community or neighborhood hospital. And the only way that they can grow is to destroy the housing in those surrounding neighborhoods. The biggest and most difficult and most unresponsive of the hospitals, of course, is the University of California Medical Center. That hospital, in a residential district, mind you, in the last 10 years has built a floor space equivalent of two and a half Transamerica corporations, mainly along Parnassus. This has caused extraordinary hardship in this neighborhood in terms of traffic and most importantly in terms of the destruction of low and moderate income housing units. Parnassus now looks like Manhattan. In a very real way, the struggle is between the people, the existing residents of this city, and corporate interests, both private and public, governmental and non-governmental, 
that really want to redo the face of San Francisco. We're very lucky in this neighborhood, though, that we have as our representative, as our assemblyman, Assemblyman Willie Brown, who happens to be chairman of the Ways and Means Committee. Well, the Haight-Ashbury is a, um, a kind of a mixed bag of many neighborhoods. There are uh, straights, there are hippies, there are short hairs, long hairs, there are black people, and classes within the framework of the black people. There are educators, and there are uneducated people, and there are people who look at it as a speculator's paradise. Some parts of it would be classified as a um, very poor neighborhood, and other parts would be classified as a very wealthy neighborhood. And so the Haight-Ashbury constitutes, uh, I think, a small city within a city, except that it has one quality that I guess most cities never uh, develop, and uh, which apparently most cities will have to develop if they are to survive as urban units in America. And that is that the people have begun to look at each other with some degree of trust, some degree of res respect, and some degree of confidence, and some degree of interdependence. And then all of a sudden City Hall and some of the the other uh, agencies of city government uh, decided to turn their attention on Haight-Ashbury and it made the citizens uh, rather angry. It's an invalid commission. You ain't going to hold it the way you want it. It ain't going to be your way no more. There's a lot of people that live here and you're going to have to recognize them. Now we would like at this time... No! No! At this time, no! No! Everybody speak, or else nobody will speak. The Haight Ashbury is, a, is a, an area made up of uh, people who are capable of developing their own views, capable of doing things for themselves. They don't need anybody to tell them who the leaders are in the Haight Ashbury. <laughs> Today, the mayor's committee lives in some free office space in a bank building on Market Street, safely removed from the neighborhood it was created to restore. One governs best when they govern from afar. Well, that's, that's really a joke, and we don't govern the hate, certainly. That's not our intent. Um, but I think it was a very practical reason for locating down on Market Street. I just think that to have located an office in the hate Ashbury, a climate being what it was, I don't think we could have been allowed to, to function. I think it would have been a hassle constantly. I knew that there were some segments of the community, particularly some of the long hairs and the more hip part of the community, that was not part of our original operation. I think this was a mistake, and I think it caused us a lot of problems and a lot of traumas after that. We have been a catalyst in the, in the community, some positive, some negative. I think the potential of being viable is still there, but I don't think the mayor's committee was organized to remain indefinitely in business. So maybe it's time to really look at ourselves as a mayor's committee and ask ourselves a very hard question. Uh, how can we continue to justify our existence, or should we continue to exist? Recently, the mayor's committee returned to Haight Street, which Alioto offered to beautify with a quarter million dollars in revenue-sharing money. The committee also acquired a new chairman, Reverend Andrew Juvenal. We've come back to the neighborhood because we are interested in helping to find jobs for the underemployed and the unemployed, in improving the quality of education, assisting in the improvement of housing, and helping to make Haight Street a more viable area for the businessmen, the customers, the whole community. It's not the individual... Before the mayor's committee, there was the Haight-Ashbury Neighborhood Council. It had been formed in the early 60s to stop the Panhandle Freeway, but didn't seem to know how to respond to the summer of love and its aftermath. Today, the Neighborhood Council is generally accepted as the most broadly based and effective organization in the hate. It was the Neighborhood Council, after all, that spearheaded the down zoning drive, and the very people who made it impossible for the mayor or his committee to function in the hate ashbury now sit on the council, along with neighborhood homeowners, merchants, and institutional representatives. The membership of the Neighborhood Council is a remarkable coming together of previously hostile factions that coexist in the Haight-Ashbury. On one end of the spectrum, there is Steve Kiever, a member of the Good Earth Commune. The justice isn't something that you receive because it's right. It depends on who's got the juice. If we had known people...
The Church of the Good Earth Commune is a loose and ever-changing association of people living in an assortment of houses and flats, most of them near Panhandle Park. Since it was formed, police have suspected the commune of dealing drugs and harboring underage runaways. Numerous raids have swept through the Good Earth houses, usually turning up some marijuana, but little in the way of hard drugs. Commune members charge that the police are harassing them because of their political activities. The Good Earth Commune calls itself a work collective and dabbles in various enterprises, including a painting company, in an effort to become self-supporting. The Commune also operates a recycling center and free store on Haight Street hauling away the weekly tons of glass, cans, and paper dropped off by people in the neighborhood provides a small income for Good Earth and a service to the community. Steve Keever is an ex-con and one of the founders of the Church of the Good Earth Commune. He and fellow commune member Ron Landberg are well-known neighborhood activists. We're experimenting or dealing with uh, neighborhood self-determination in an international community which is uh, bringing hip, black, white, straight uh, landowners and the poor together to deal with their neighborhood. We're exploring the possibilities of being as free as possible and understanding that that's tempered with uh, as much self-discipline as possible. And the Good Earth Family Commune is a place that tries to live out that concept. We have guidelines on drugs and it seems to be one area where we have anything approaching rules. Because communal living situations have always gone down the drain when hard drugs are around. So, no needles and no hard drugs. There are several people on welfare. In most cases, mothers who have children and have special needs outside of what we can seem to get together from our work collectives. So we're not completely self-supporting at this point, but it's better than it's ever been, and it's going to continue to get better. Living together, we can change the atmosphere, build a community with our fear, people from far and near, you are all welcome here. For a long time, there was two groups, you know, there was us and them. And at one point, somewhere in the late fall of 70, I think, we started fighting with each other. The liberals started fighting with the long hairs, the long hairs started fighting with the police, all the way around the circle. The Good Earth Commune represents one end of the spectrum encompassed by the Haight-Ashbury Neighborhood Council. The other end of that spectrum includes people like John McCauley. What they're doing now, and it's a citywide policy. Edgewood Avenue on the slopes of Mount Sutro is one of the most exclusive residential addresses in the city. The average value of a home here is $90,000. Yet, Edgewood Avenue is part of the Haight-Ashbury. However, some who live along this street might wish it otherwise. John and Rena McCauley live on Edgewood Avenue and both are active in neighborhood affairs. John McCauley is a Republican, a Montgomery Street businessman, and an American aristocrat who proudly traces his family tree back to the Continental Congress. Ostensibly, it's difficult to imagine what the Macaulays have in common with the people of the Good Earth Commune. Things that should be ostensible, that should be obvious, are what we do have in common with the Church of the Good Earth. And that is that we feel that the body politic, particularly as far as the city is concerned, has gotten a long ways away from serving the people. I felt uh, that the only way to save the neighborhood was to appeal to the various groups and uh, various individuals and make them realize that this, despite the fact that they may be of a different, uh, uh, different, uh, they varied uh, politically and political beliefs, 
But they had one thing in common, that was the place they lived in. Because the thing that, co that connects us is not an agreement on um, how many people live in, in, in your house and how many people live in my commune. Or, um, um, you know, do you work nine to five and, and do I not work nine to five? Not on those kind of things that or continue to divide us, or that you're older, younger, I smoke marijuana, you drink uh, 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 booze. We have a different lifestyle, but we recognize their lifestyle is valid for them, mm -hmm. and I think they recognize our lifestyle is valid for us. We come together specifically on the thing that says there's got to be room in this neighborhood, and therefore the whole society, for them, for us, and for all the thems and uses that are in this neighborhood. <laughs> few urban neighborhoods anywhere more thoroughly integrated than the Haight-Ashbury. Over 40% of the population is black. Some are middle-class homeowners who have been there a while. A greater number are recently arrived from the Western Edition, where they were forced out by urban renewal. And no one is sure to what extent the black people of the Haight feel a part of the neighborhood's new sense of unity. Black people in the neighborhood are part of it, uh, I think the only difference is is the priorities that they have as compared to the uh, the white citizen in the hate. Black people are as disunited as the the white section of the community has been and and continues to be. Most of the activists in the community uh, happen to be young, happen to be long hair. Black people, uh, uh, for instance, may go to a community meeting and get turned off because uh, they feel that these people don't relate to them, nor can they. Uh, uh, relate to them. I think we've had very good input from the black uh, black community in, in uh, the Haight Ashbury neighborhood council. They don't really understand that uh, how uh, black people's concern might be more uh, getting the toilet fixed and demonstrating downtown because uh, somebody got busted for pot. Some of the most conservative people in this neighborhood are what we might call middle class black people. Uh, uh, they are still striving for that traditional American dream. I, it's not up to me to tell them that, that I feel that that's a bankrupt dream. The thing that I feel that's happening between the black and the white community is, is that is probably one of the first places where um, um, black people have, have been able to see a sustained effort on the part of white people to change the politics. It takes a long time. It takes a long time to educate people uh, as to who the friends is, who the enemies are. people residential people the neighborhoods of this city more power 
is very revolutionary. I don't know anything more revolutionary than that. I really don't. So up there with the with the movement that they have now, with the youth, with the with the youth movement of trying to be unity and togetherness, hey, I think it's going to be far out, man. You know. I think the Haight-Ashbury is the example of what the rest of America is going to be about. Building together, we can turn around the hay, give it a warm and loving face, the people are great. Make it a better place